stupid. I really need to write a script. You just gonna stare at me? Like, uh, what are we doing here? You want me to continue the art print series? Are you sure? Okay. Okay. Maybe I will. Okay, it's been a couple months. Okay, I, you know, I, I promise I'll do it, so I'll do it, okay? All right, so today uh, we're gonna do uh, coloring, okay? It's gonna be pretty simple. Let's just go. Go. Speed off. I like color. How about you? This video is about coloring. Okay. <laughs> so, so my approach in this piece is to start with a method called flat color. Um, it's used a lot in the comic book industry by colorists, uh, which is something I originally studied um, when I was in college and before that I originally wanted to be a comic book artist I think I've mentioned that before but so the way flat color works is you will just take a single solid color sometimes they don't even consider what the final colors will be at that time and, and that's usually the case because you do tweak things and realize that something just isn't working but you basically fill up the entire image with a flat Color. And by flat, I mean there's no variation in shading or highlights. It's just that single hue color. So you won't want to change that if you want something to be the same color. So uh, later on, you can take like the magic wand in Photoshop and Clip Studio and do a selection on that layer and it'll just automatically highlight that entire color. Anywhere that it is on the page, it'll pick that color up if you have the right settings turned on. So then you can go in and manipulate those and paint over those colors to, you know, work on texture or shading, highlights, uh, bounce shadows, whatever you need to do. Um, so it's, it's a really nice technique. It gives you a lot of customizability and yeah, so that's what I'm doing with this piece to start off with. So th this video won't be that interesting of a visual, um, but it, it'll kind of give you a little bit of insight into how I approach uh, the coloring of a piece. Um, as complex as the line art is in this this work, it can, it can take a while, um, and I try to not have too many colors of the same hue touching each other kind of give a little bit of variation, breaking things up, um, where I, I think it would be important to do that. Um, the tool that I'm heavily using in this video is called the Bucket Tool. Um, this is specific to uh, Clip Studio Paint. Um, there's ways to do this in Photoshop, but it just isn't as efficient. Uh, basically with the Bucket Tool in Clip Studio Paint, I think my kids are... <laughs> being silly in the background. Um, so the the fill bucket in Clip Studio will do an area expand underneath the line art that you're referencing. So it'll automatically keep the, the, the it'll automatically fill the color where in, in between the lines and it will also expand underneath. So there's no like hidden uh, pixels that didn't get filled, which is something that happens in Photoshop a lot. And you can do an expand fill in Photoshop, but this, I, I've noticed this does a way better job than Photoshop. You can kind of tweak the, the settings on the fly for how large the area expansion is. And there's also a close gap setting. So if you have some line art that doesn't, if you're a little bit of a, like a looser uh, inker when it comes to line art, um, you can use the close gap setting that uh, will automatically 
use uh, computer generation to figure out, you know, what what's the intended shape supposed to be. And, you know, it doesn't work 100% of the time, but it, it probably works like 80 to 90% of the time. Um, and that's a really helpful tool that, you know, you can, I don't think you can do it in Photoshop, to be honest. And that's one of the key selling features to me about Clip Studio. Um, in this piece, I am using a pretty limited color palette, trying to use complementary colors, sticking as close to the original colors of the uh, first version that I'm referencing uh, that you can see on the left hand side. Um, but I decided to introduce a little magenta and some orange and some variation of shade of the purples and greens and, and yellows um, just to make it a little more exciting. And since I have a lot more going on in this piece than my original that I'm referencing, you know, I wanted to be able to have more color to break up the shapes. So it's since it's very shape heavy um, and unique shape heavy, I wanted that all that stuff to pop out. And if I've got too many, if I don't have that many colors to work with covering such a large area with all these little tiny pieces, you know, there could be a lot of rep repetition that I don't want. Um, so that's one of the reasons I decided to introduce new colors. Um, they're mostly complementary colors like yellow and purple and then the green and magenta once magenta shows back up or not shows back up, starts to show up. Um, there I started to add like a kind of a peachish orange, which for some reason is my favorite color right now. That's the, that's the color I'm really digging right now is like this orangey pink. I don't, I don't know why, but it's probably just a phase and I'll start liking another color, color, but, um, yeah, when it comes to color selection, I, I just am really drawn towards bright, bright hues, um, in my traditional and in my digital painting. I don't really know what draws me to that. I do like things popping. Um, and bright colors definitely do pop and I, I kind of definitely influenced by like psychedelic color stuff that's like trippy um, yeah I, I think I think there's a lot of styles of painting and art and I just prefer to be on the side of poppy bright colors it's fun to me okay <laughs> it's, it's, it's what I like um, yeah, as far as like figuring out colors, if they sell these like color wheels, um, that you can always get that tell you like different types of complementary colors or tetriad complementary, um, there's all sorts of different references you can find online. I'm sure there's plenty of YouTube videos about color selection. Um, this is mainly just, uh, showcasing how I, how I do it, at least in the digital case. And yeah, I'm probably, not, probably not going to riff that much longer. I'll probably just speed this up and let you enjoy the rest of this video as I color. Um, it's kind of like co coloring one of the, in one of those coloring book apps on the iPad. It's just, I, I made the line art myself and the tools myself. So it's a very, uh, monotonous process that doesn't take that long. Isn't it super exciting? I think there's different tools that can actually fill this stuff in for you, but I just, I kind of like this, this process. I can shut my brain down, listen to a good podcast and get through this until I get to the fun next fun stage of shading, which is what we'll do in the next video. I'll be showing you this thing, uh, finished. Um, and as of recording this, uh, this voiceover, I, I, I have finished this art print, so <laughs> I'll, I'll be much quicker in releasing my next video and uh, not leave you waiting for a couple months. If you've been waiting, I don't know if anybody's been waiting, but it's what you got to do on YouTube is uh, post content and keep people engaged. And I, I want to 
get back on back in the swing of doing that i was doing that i think almost weekly for a while and now i now i am uh, behind so i'm glad you're here and watching um you know if you have any questions about my coloring method if you want me to go more in depth on the bucket tool that i was talking about or the magic wand tool um leave a comment let me know i'm happy to make a video about that specifically to show you what i'm talking about um but yeah i'm gonna let this play out and thanks for watching i hope you have a great day and bye bye uh, bye